What's up? This is Patrick at RideCards.com, and it's cold. <laughs> I've got a s- sweater on and a jacket and a scarf, and uh, it's December. <laughs> Anywho, today we're going to be talking about population reports as they relate to graded cards and how the population reports are mutually exclusive from tough grades and why you should and shouldn't care about this correlation. Mind you, it's a correlation. It's not a causation. And I stress between the differences. Correlation is when two things exist in tandem. Causation is when two things exist in tandem and they're dependent on one another. So, for example, it's sunny outside, the ice melts. Okay, great. It's sunny outside and there are reruns of Seinfeld on. They're just correlations. Uh, The reruns of Seinfeld aren't caused by the sun. But... The co- there is a causation between the sun and ice melting outside. So, I hope that makes sense. Anywho, let's get started. Some population reports. Okay, so... <clears throat> I don't focus on them myself. I don't care about population reports, and here's why. Okay, especially with modern. If I get a modern card, and it's marketed to me as, oh, it's a Pop 2, and it's, say, like a... Let's say that's an up-and-coming guy who still has a, an active career. Let's say that's a Stephen Piscotti. <laughs> okay, just because I, I, I used him in a blog post recently, so I have him on my mind. Say it's a Stephen Piscotti base card, or it's like a one-tier-up parallel, like a ref, base refractor. And someone come, and it's not even a rookie card, right? It's like second, third year, let's just say. And I say that because Stephen Piscotti has been, in, he's been added to sets over the last couple of years, so... Uh, that that works. Um, Some would say it's a pop two. All right, great, it's pop two. All that tells me is that two people, out of all the people that own that card, bothered to get it graded. It doesn't tell me it's rare. It doesn't tell me there are only two that exist. That just tells me that there are two copies that are in population because there are two of the many people that own that card that got it graded. Is that does that make it rare? No. I mean, in the sense of how many examples exist in, say, a 9 or whatever the grade came out, let's say it's a 9. Yes, in fact, it is rare. Does that make it desirable and valuable? No, that doesn't. It just means that there are only two, but there aren't two among 70,000 that were graded. There were just two among, say, three that were graded, and two came back 9s. So someone could say it's a PSA 9 pop 2 of this card, and... They can market that to you, make you think that you're getting a good deal on something, when in fact they're, they're embellishing um, information to make it seem like it's desirable to buy that card, right? Now, if, if it's a little bit more a significant card, it's a little bit older, and that card suffers from centering issues consistently and thousands have been graded. Perfect example. Perfect example is 1979 Topps Ozzie Smith rookie card. This card suffers consistently from left to right centering. The card was on the edge of the uh, the sheet uh, when when uh, print took place at Topps for that set. And that card suffers consistently from poor centering left to right. Okay, this is when you should care about population reports because that card, as significant as it is, gets graded consi- like a lot. Like thousands of them have been graded. Okay, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them have been graded. So, of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, the population of a ten is significantly tiny. Right, nines a little bit better, but still very very rare to find even a nine. And eights are available. Okay. Because the lesser grade you go, the more available, more abundant that card is, 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 is affordable, becomes affordable. But because of that card suffering consistently from centering issues, when someone says it's a pop nine, only three graded higher, that's actually significant. Because of the volume associated with how many have been graded, that's when population reports become more relevant to the conversation. Okay? A modern base card with a tier level parallel, one's one up. Someone markets to me like three, only three graded. That doesn't mean anything to me. And that shouldn't mean anything to you. <laughs> All that says is that the three people of the several hundreds of people that have that non-serial numbered parallel, let's just say, for example, bothered to spend 15 to 20 bucks to have that thing graded. And if it's a one parallel 
up and it's not a rookie, it's, you know, you might be spending more in grading than the card's actually going to be worth regardless of what it comes back as. Now, the flip side of that, as we discussed with the Ozzy Smith rookie, is if the card is significant, it's a bit older, 70s, 80s even sometimes, depending on what it is, specifically with the Ricky Henderson rookie card, 1980 tops. <clears throat> when something's graded all the time, consistently, routinely with these grading companies, specifically PSA as you go further back. Now there's BVG. Um, they've been known to grade some old stuff as well, vintage, Beckett vintage grading. But <clears throat> as it stands right now, the popularity is weighed heavily on the side of PSA. Um, this conversation isn't about grading companies though, it's about why population reports matter and then when they don't matter. So, the next time you see a listing that says, you know, only one, one or two graded higher or it's a pop 12 or pop 2 or whatever, look at the card and ask yourself a couple questions. Is this a significant card? Okay, that's question number one. Is this a rookie card? Is this a superstar? Is this a Hall of Famer? Why should I care about the population report? And, you know, aside from these questions, you might ask yourself, do I even ever plan to registry collect? Does the population even matter to me? Because as a player collector myself, if I've been looking for a card for a long time and it comes up and it's graded, it surfaces as a graded example, and I, I just want the card, I honestly don't care about the population of the card. Don't care. In fact, I don't even care if it's graded. I just want a card, that card. It could be raw for all I care. Just getting the card, just having the card in and of itself is hard enough to do just as a standalone objective. So <clears throat> ask yourself these things as you're perusing eBay and wherever else this information is marketed to you to, uh, in an effort to stimulate your interest in buying the card, pursuing a purchase decision, purchasing decision. Okay, why does it matter? Why do pop reports matter? Okay, so this isn't really rhetorical. Just think about it for a minute and we'll, we'll talk about it. They matter in, in vintage when stuff is significantly, when stuff is graded routinely a lot. And we've covered this a little bit already. Like the 86 Jordan. I mean, granted, as we continue to go into the, you know, as time goes by, more and more tens will come out of the grading because more and more of the 86 Fleer Jordans will be graded. That's generally considered the rookie card. I've always looked at the 84 star card as the, as the genuine rookie card. That's just the way I've gone, gone about it. I get why the 86 Fleer Jordan is considered the rookie card. It's the first to be licensed by the uh, major licensing houses for the uh, uh, the Basketball Association, so I get that. But the conversation isn't around that. It's around the Jordan being, you know, low pop and a 10. And why, why it matters that if you get a 9 it's market to you, I was like, oh, only it's 56 graded higher. 56 may seem high, but if you look at it in the percentage-wise, and all the different cards graded, of the all the different examples of that card graded over time, 56 might be a significantly small percentage. So say, for example, if it's 56 among... 10,000 that have been graded, that's a needle in a haystack, right? So look at it that way. And on the flip side of that, if you, know, if, 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 if you look at that marketing and say, hey, why does it matter that there are two graded higher? Do I even care to have even a higher grade of this card? You know, Say I just want that card because they've been looking for it for a long time and it's not a key rookie card. It's just a rare insert from a certain era. Do I care about getting a 10? I mean, I'm, I'm completely fine getting eights and nines just to have the card. I don't care that there's a population report for the card. I'm just trying to get the card just by itself, just in any condition. Granted, I usually get them in near mint plus uh, because the cards are generally handled professionally before they reach my collection, which is always nice. And modern cards are generally in that capacity. They arrive in that capacity anyway. Vintage is a different story, obviously, because of the, the environment, the context back in the you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. So, you know, look at that, think about that when you're looking and researching, um, and even when you're listing and selling, ask yourself, does the prospective customer care about what I'm writing about this card in terms of population report? When I reference population report, is it even meaningful to add that in? 
90s inserts, like certain high level ones, like let's say really rare stuff that people are just wanting examples of, like, you know, I brought this stuff in the past, Crusade Reds from 98. Like, if you're on the, the lookout for a Crusade Red for your player, which is like a unicorn corn for your, your run, the green, purple, red, and you see a listing for a 9, do you care that there's a 10 in existence? Are you going to skip out on that 9 and wait for that 10? And it may never happen. And that, in that case, doesn't matter if there's a 10 of that card in the market. I'm just stoked in my lifetime I came across a 9, or even in any condition, that, that, that the red, to finish my run. This is only one isolated incident or example. There are many, you know, many, many uh, examples. Registry collecting can be difficult. It is um, a huge, huge bite to chew off. And as a collector who doesn't register collect, I know how hard it is to find cards in any condition. In any condition. Much less nines and tens. I wouldn't, I can never, in my lifetime ever see myself registry collecting my collection again in nines and tens. First of all, I don't have the space. Second of all, I just don't care. <laughs> I honestly don't care. But this is just my own sort of the way I go about my collection. Uh, but if you're in it to get a graded card or if you're in it to market a graded card, just be cognizant of what, when the population report means anything and when it doesn't and why you should care either way. Uh, this is an addendum to the uh, population report conversation. I want to also mention that population reports may not always be accurate. And here's why. Some of us, they don't, we don't like graded cards. Some collectors just don't like them. So when they get a graded card of their player or a card that they, they like, they just want the raw example, they'll crack it out. Okay? When they crack it out, that antiquates the record that is on file for how many examples of that card were graded, the grade that was just cracked out. Which means that what you're reading about population report-wise is no longer accurate. And because there's no way to measure accurately what's still intact, you have to just take the population re report uh, at face value. You have to just like be okay with understanding that they're not going to be always accurate. This, this, people crack them out and resub, and then crack out and resub all the time. Meanwhile, population report increases, but you know at the expense of a resub for three or four or five different times. So it's inflated. What you're seeing, let's say, let's say if a card is population report zero, and I sub it, and it gets comes back a grade I don't like. Okay, that population report just went up to one. And I don't like the grade, so I'm going to crack out and send it back in. Same card. Population report goes up another one. That's now a two. Same card now. It's the same card. Now two population for the two grades on that card. Keep doing this over time. And I'm just one collector. You know, expand that. Add a bunch of different collectors in there that are doing the same thing. This is very common with... with Vintage cards, people feel like they should get a 7 when it comes back a 6, and so they'll, they'll send it in again, crack it out and send it in again. Some people, the unscrupulous ones, will actually doctor um, the damage to try to thin it out. You know, they'll use like spoons to try to like smudge out wrinkles and then resend it. Yes, I know, that's really unethical. I'm, I, I feel it too. Um, but I've heard about these stories. And people do this stuff. And people, did, they just think that the grade was wrong, and the grader didn't do it accurately, so they... Send it in hopes that somebody else will grade it and it'll come back a higher grade. That happens too. The risk that you take doing that, just by the way, is the card coming back an even lesser, more undesirable grade than originally had been intact. I'll give you a perfect example. I once witnessed a, a dealer purchase from a customer standing next to me a PSA 8 example of the 1990 Tops Frank Thomas No Name on front. Okay, an 8, PSA 8. I learned about a month later, he had cracked it out and resubbed it, came back a 6. A 6. That's a huge decline in value from an 8 to a 6. And that, But that was the risk that he took. He thought it was a 9, and he sent it back in, it came back a 6. Alright, so I, you know, I don't know the details, if he sent it in like 
Um, and he was uh, irresponsible in his packaging methods, and the card was dinged a bit on the way out or the way back. I mean, I don't know what happened. All I know is that he told me it came back a six, and I, I kind of was like, Dude, why, why would you bother when the grade is that high of that significant card? Am I going to send a 52 tops mantle in back in once I get it and it comes back a six, let's say? And I think it's a seven. Like, why would it's such a significant card, not a rookie card, by the way. Uh, that's the common blunder is that the 52 tops mantle is a rookie card. It's actually a second year card. 51 Bowman is the rookie card. Anywho, significant cards, the way I see it, you got to be very careful about resubs on significant pieces because of this risk, right? Um, you sort of like sub at your own risk. Obviously, that's the thing. Be very careful when you do that and just accept that it might not come back a higher grade than you had, you had hoped. And you might get a lesser grade. And then, again, if you resub it again, it's the same. You're taking on the same risk again. So just be careful about that. Bottom line is that the population report is just a report of how many times that particular card has been graded. It doesn't mean how many of that card graded exist in population. The population report is the population of times that card has been graded. End of story. Period. So just be aware of that. This is probably pretty obvious stuff for a lot of you guys. Uh, for those of you that are relatively new in the hobby, I hope this helps. I know for me, um, when I first learned about people grading and then resubbing, cracking out and resub, I was like, why would you... <laughs> I was like, why would you bother? I mean, the card is in pretty good shape already, and it looks like it could pass as a 6 or a 7. And if you wanted a 7, it just means that you weren't as, I mean, knowledgeable as the grader. Granted, I know some of us might be more knowledgeable than some graders, so I can't really say that. I mean, I've seen some grades come back 9.5s and 10s on centering when the centering is like 0, 100 or 10.90. It's that bad. I mean, I've seen this. Obviously, us as the buyers... Us as the customers are more knowledgeable in that capacity. That happens. It's rare. Those are outliers, but that does happen. And in that, that case, you know, we have to trust our own gut and say like, yeah, this could use a resub. Granted, if it comes back a 9.5 and it really should be like a 6 or a, a 5 and you got a 9.5, that could, I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously it's more valuable in the market, but, you know, customers are smart. They're going to see this and be like, that's, it came back a 9.5, but dude, that's the centering on that card is horrendous. That's, that's not a 9.5. I mean, these conversations happen. They happen in the hobby. You, you might have had them yourself. So, you know, if I think something comes back a 6 and it's, it's a 5, or if I think it should be a 7 and it comes back a 6, and the way I go about collecting, and I, I don't, I'm not going to crack it out and resub because it's a lot of work and it's more money out of pocket. And, you know, there are guys that sell. They buy and sell, so they do that. Uh... I personally don't recommend it, but, you know, these are decisions you have to make on your own uh, for your own collecting habits and however you decide to manage the process of submitting grades, submitting cards for grading. Uh, and, you know, all the best to you. <laughs> you just be aware that uh, just accept the risk and understand that every time you do that, you contribute to the... Um, uh, d diluting of the population report, right? You dilute, you help dilute the population report. Just understand that and accept that as well. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the end of that piece. I just said uh, I wanted to add that in. Okay, another addendum to the grading population report piece. Grading is managed by humans, which means that it's subject to human error, Right? Anything managed by humans introduces the possibility of human error. This is an expectation, more so than it is an acceptance. You expect every now and then to see some variation, some variety in quality, because it's managed by humans. Okay? Process efficiencies in human process is, is something that is, in operations management, something that is always worked on to improve. By, you know, obviously curtailing redundancies in the human resources department and, you know, um, replacing inadequate participants on the team, this kind of thing. 
So because grading is, is managed by humans, we're going to see some variance. That's an expectation. I've seen a minimal variance, but I have seen variance. And the stuff I've seen is kind of egregious. It's deplorable, actually. The pieces I've seen that have come back at certain grades, like, why, how on earth did that come back a 10 or a 9.5? I expected a 4. <laughs> so it's, it's understand that and realize that because grading is managed by humans, this kind of thing is going to happen until the end of time or until grading is managed by robots or machines in some way. Okay. So just expect that and be okay with it. Um, and don't be completely shocked when you get something that is signif- This is severely downgraded or severely upgraded, completely out of left field. All right, I'll leave you with that. And that concludes this episode. I hope that you got something out of this and you find it somewhat educational. Thank you for listening. And until next time, enjoy collecting. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.